I'm going to ask each of you just to take about four minutes to talk to us about what inspired this solution, the characteristics, and why it is game-changing. We can start with you. Hello, everyone, ladies and gentlemen. It is my honor to present you today Digital Family Card. This project helped us to fight against social inequality, injustice that caused because of bureaucracy. How it was in the past, how people get social benefits from the government in the past in our government, in, in our country. Applicants with 24 types of documents must visit mayor's office, one-stop shop, and uh, they must wait for 18 days. Imagine 18 days if you have some trouble, you want to get a social benefit, and you are waiting for 18 days just to have a notification that everything is okay with your documents. And another 13 days there if you, if you are missing some documents. And what we've done as a government, we've created a data lake of government of Kazakhstan. Uh, we collected all the databases from government bodies into one data lake, and we are able to analyze and predict and uh, uh, fight with uh, any problems that people are facing with. And this data lake consists of uh, different databases about health care, tax committee, the pensions, the uh, credits, etc., etc. Next slide, please. And the methodology was this, of digital family card was designed uh, together with UNDP and the uh, uh, Ministry of Labor and Social Protection and our ministry. And together, we designed the methodology and automated and created a software which, uh, uh, which allows us to have a family composition and family ties. And all information about citizens from public authorities is processed and family composition is automatically created based on this information, on this big data. And we can monitor social and economic conditions, home conditions, health care, education, and others. And what's next? Please, next slide. And we are now we are able to identify family problems that need to be addressed. For example, lack of financial resources, unemployment, have no housing, and have no health insurance, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And we we try we try to create an algorithm that analyzes the, that analyzes the data across the government and find the identifies problems and difficult situa life situations of families. And we are not only identifying them, we're trying to provide support measure, appropriate support measure. And it's also allowed us to, 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 uh, to classify, to group from prosperous to emergency. And the group, that need help is, of course, the emergency group. And we try to fight against the, their problems. And the appropriate support measures are collected, and uh, we try to identify uh, ev every problem. And uh, uh, now we are able to, to provide targeted social assistance, housing aid, and other social benefits. And next slide, please. And at the end, as a result of this project, the proactive services from the government, when we identify that family in difficult life situation, we don't wait anymore for applying the doc with documents applying to the government offices. We send the notification that we are there with the support measure, and we are eligible to have this support measure from the government. 
if, and if people send yes on, the, on this notification, support measure automatically will be provided to their banking account. And already this year, 800,000 proposal notifications sent and 650,000 of them get support measures from the government. It's not only the digital solution, it is a commitment from the government of Kazakhstan, commitment to be proactive and commitment to solve any problem of families. Thank you. Thank you, Your Excellency. And Omar, your turn. Tell us a bit more about Mizan 2. Thank you, Shinaida. Uh, I'm the last speaker before lunch, so I'm not going to be long, but SDG 16 is really an important goal. SDG 16 seeks to achieve equal access to justice for people by 2030. Nevertheless, in 2019, the World Justice Project conducted a study to um, find the um, justice gap. And it found that 1.5 million billion people around the world have uh, difficulty accessing justice services while they live in areas where there is a, a, a justice system that is functional. Why? Uh, the problem is there are no means to address the actual day-to-day uh, -day difficulties that those people are facing. In Palestine, the High Judicial Council, established in 2001, seeked to solve these problems. And in doing so, it chose to digitalize court services and uh, introduce a case management system that later became called as Mizan. Mizan is a government-owned application that um, basically works on digitalizing all uh, transactions in the courts. It started as an application to register cases and uh, slowly started uh, di uh, digitalizing other processes. And in doing so, data started being generated by the system. The High Judicial Council started using this data to uh, drive their policy decisions, and in, in, in doing so, enhancing justice services. And uh, analyzing this data, the Mizan system, for example, figured out bottlenecks in some of the um, daily uh, processes that are done in the courts. For example, enforcement. This is very critical because enforcement is one of the final stages of litigation, and it takes many years in some cases. For example, in alumni, uh, women have to uh, wait for court decisions to be implemented over multiple years. What the uh, High Church Council did is they tried to digitalize enforcement uh, and payment in these cases. For example, in 2022, a new enforcement and electronic payment uh, was introduced. And this service, for example, have helped the High Judicial Council uh, increase the number of enforcements from 47,000 in 2021, when it was paper-based, into 360,000 enforcement requests in 2022. This is seven times more what they could do without digitalization. And the impact of this has immediately been felt by many court users, in particular women. Let's take, for example, the case of Maryam. Uh, when she was 31 years old, she, the court had granted her an alimony after her divorce. And this was supposed to be implemented until 2030, which is the year where the goals are need to be achieved. Uh, for her to be able to receive the alimony, she needed to do a trip to the court. And uh, from six years, she did 70 trips to the court in a very difficult context. Sometimes she reaches the court and there's no payment. After the implementation of the e-services, with one click, the money is transferred into Mariam's bank account, and she gets a notification on her registered mobile phone number. And also, in the mobile application that was developed in 2018, um, she also gets notification, and she doesn't need to leave her house. Uh, Mariam has received 20 payments so far since the implementation of this service without having to leave her hometown. This is the power of technology and how it can impact the life of people. Governments and institutions around the world need to um, uh, adopt more solutions like Mizan that caters for daily justice issues that the people face. 
And in so, we can improve our chances in achieving the goals of 2030. And in so, we can also be true to article number one of the Universal Declaration of Human, uh, of, uh, human Rights that um, um, declare every uh, person free and equal in dignity and rights, which by extension say that people should have equal access to justice when these rights are violated. Thank you. Thank you so much. And thank you to our speakers.